Welcome to Louisiana Heartbeats. I'm Sudie Landry, and I have a smile on my face because the title of this book is If I Only Had 24, 25 Hours in a Day. And I keep laughing, Melinda, every time I read this title because I would always say, Lord, if only I had more hours than 24 hours. But I have experienced it where I don't want more than 24 hours in a day. But Life Ed, I have another author here, and she's here today to share with us why she wrote this book. And so we're going to let her share some of her, her desires, some of her plans. But first of all, welcome to our show, Melinda Turner. Thank you so much. And first of all, I want to thank you for having me. And I want to congratulate you for everything you do. Well, it's all God, and this is a uh, station where we can talk about Him, too. Thank you. Mainly, that's what this platform is. Absolutely. And thank you very much. I am so grateful that uh, I, I wish that I had the book. So I could have read it before, <laughs> but due to the week that I've had, Melinda, I can tell you that book probably been a huge blessing because after reading just what little bit I did from the write-up on Amazon.com, mm -hmm. I can tell you that I learned this week, this past week, my life is too busy. Yes. And I'm starting to share it with you before we even walked in the door. Yes. My schedule is so programmed to go by a daily planner that if I didn't read it, which I did not this past Friday night, to see what I had planned Saturday, mm -hmm. I got up, felt so good, so relaxed, I was reading a book, to, to come to discover I had two guests waiting here wow. to come into this station to be interviewed. Wow. So your book probably would benefit me a whole lot. Absolutely. Because I want to put what you do. I do God first. Yes. Family. Yes. Life. Absolutely. And then it gets too busy and we're in trouble. So yes. I would like for you at this particular point, what was your reason for writing this book? Um, first of all, I want to start off with the title. That's it. That's what I'm asking. Um, if I only had 25 hours in a day, which meant that no matter how busy we get, we still want that extra hour. And I found out even if you had that extra hour, you still would want two more extra hours. So, you know, long story short is that, you know, we need to use what time God gave us to live the best life we can with that, that amount of time. So you're sitting here and proudly saying that you are a child of God. Yes, ma'am, I am. Well, anyone who's on that path, wants to be on that path, and has been on that path knows that you do have to put God first. Yes. And like you Absolutely. said, we all know and that it to be true that with God first, everything else does fall into place. Yes. Not yes. always easy. Not always easy. Because we need to listen to yes. Yes. what He's wanting us to do. Now, mm -hmm. with that said, as I was reading some of your notes, who inspired you? How did you start knowing that this was a passion of yours to speak out on? your passion, uh, who, what was his name, Wes? Okay, um, first let me start off by saying that um, I didn't start off wanting to write this book. <laughs> uh, it became a story that I had to tell. And it started off by me being so busy in my life that I knew I had to make changes. Um, I just started losing my, my touch with family, you know, myself, and God. So, um, you know, God just kind of stopped me in my tracks, you know, and, uh, and said, you know, you need to refocus and renew your relationship with him. That's right. Okay. So what I did was I, I looked over my life. I saw where I was so busy. I was trying to control everything. And really, and, that's, and that too plays a part. When we try to not ask people for help and we want to do it all ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was a big thing for me, mm -hmm. to step back and say, Humble ourselves. it's okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what I did was, you know, I, for me personally, uh, being a registered nurse for 15 years, I decided, you know, I need to take a break, you know. And, and that's what I did. I took off some time. Um, like I said, I renewed my relationship with God. I realized that I couldn't do it all by myself. Um, I started going to church more. I started reading my Bible more. You know, I started spending more time with my family. And you know what? I started looking at what was good for me. Right. Because a lot of times we don't do that. Okay. And that's where the book came from. You know, it was my path, my story, my testimony that I felt that I just had to share with someone because I knew I wasn't the only one going through it. 
Well, you know what, Melinda? Most of us, nine, nine out of ten people, no if, buts, and ends, had no idea we'd be sitting at this table talking about a book where years ago we didn't even know we were going to write. Exactly. But doesn't God's Word say that He takes our ashes and He turns Into them into religion. beauty? Yes. Okay. And so God knows where, you, where we are, where we've been, and where He wants us to go. Exactly. So most people say, I have found God. No. No, no, no. God was always he there. He was always there. Okay, we just have to listen, yes, listen. exactly. And so, I, like you, survived a uh, family situation, but with an attitude that I always believed my glass was half full, never half empty. Mm -hmm. Later on, as I grew older, then mm -hmm. I got into God's Word, and then I began to have wisdom, understanding. Right. Exactly. So, He gave me a spirit of boldness, and people say the gift of gab, okay? But that's good because when other things fall apart, what God has given you, He won't take away. Exactly. But He does want you to use it. Exactly. And that's why I'm so grateful to be here on this uh, television show today mm -hmm. with you because God knows where those stories are. Right. And He wants them to come here and be focused. Exactly. And so He's letting you know that He's opening doors, and this is just one of the many doors. Yes, yes. That and He's already opened and for you. I received that. And, Amen. Um, and also what I did, and I want to share with you and the public, is that I learned to volunteer more and serve. <laughs> that I wasn't doing, and really, because I just felt I didn't have time to do it. That's right. You know, but now what I do, I, I volunteer more, you know, I serve. Um, and I want to talk about some things that are in the book. It's, in fact, I was going to tell you, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. You're also a wife, so we want to yes, plug. Yes, absolutely. Plug that I family am, unit I too, am. And then talk about I'm a wife. And uh, a mother of a 16-year-old son, okay? So that definitely keeps us busy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But like I said, you know, um, I felt like I was drifting away from that. I was drifting away from the family unit, from my spiritual being, because all I was doing was basically waking up and doing the task at hand and just going to work, coming home, doing the things that needed to be done. And, you know, and let me say something about being having um, the best life. It's not about being perfect in what you do. That's right. You know, it's just about being, you know, uh, wanting the passion, you know, to do what you do and enjoy what you do. It doesn't matter if you finish the dishes that night. You know, I mean, it doesn't what matter. What is a I yes. had to learn? Yes, that's right. <laughs> you know, when I used to come yes. home from work, you know, I thought the house had to be clean 100%. You know, the food had to be cooked 100%. But you know what? I never used to reach out to my family. You know, you know, my husband would be there. He's willing and able. But you know what I would say? No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, and we tend to do that. We tend to put everything on ourselves. So now it's like when he says, I'm going to do it, I go, okay. All right. All Thank right. You. you know, and then we have to be, you know, grateful in whatever comes about in our life. Right. You know, because if he's willing to do it, you know, he may not do it the way I do it. But it's okay because he has helped me out. And you have to be grateful for that. That's right. That's you right. Know? So, I mean, I just, I love to volunteer. I do a adult literacy program. Okay. I right. volunteer for that. Um, I also am, like I said, a nurse, but I am a substance abuse practitioner. Right. What that means is that, you know, I had to learn a lot about substance abuse. And from a medical perspective, you know, I learned, you know, about it being a disease. And... On that level, I was able to volunteer, and this is a passion of mine because this is going to be our fourth year going to Tennessee to um, West Morgan Ministries where he puts on a recovery festival in September. Okay. Right. And um, me and my husband, we travel out there and we volunteer to just help him serve. You know, awesome. he celebrates the men and women in recovery, and he himself is in recovery. And, um, and like I said, you know, I, I started off by following his ministry, and from that, God led me into that purpose. Yes, that's pretty, it's yes. a journey. Yes, absolutely. Where God wants you to be. Absolutely. But if he's going to use you, he's sure going to equip you. Oh, absolutely. But now as a older Christian, as a new <laughs> Christian walking, you get so excited. What next, God? I need some signs from above. Right. And what it all comes down to, God knows a heart. Exactly. And so as exactly. long as we're willing to be led yes. by the Spirit. With you, Belinda, like we were talking earlier, I went 
to the book signing in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Yes. With the motive just to get guests to come on the show to share their stories. And here I am, an author myself, and my publisher is sitting next to me, and he's sounding like a barker at a, <laughs> at a whatever it's called, circus. <laughs> and he's used to selling books. Hey, we have an author over here. Mm -hmm. Hey, you like some candy? Here we go. <laughs> and I told him, I said, okay, this is my last book signing with you because I am led to encourage and to be in a private setting or possibly speak in front of people like I used to. So his goal was to sell the book. My goal was to meet everybody there and tell their stories. And Melinda, I'm so grateful that we finally got together because let me yes. tell you, I have had yes. some awesome stories come through. I think God sent every Christian oh, I believe that, that he was out I there. I believe that. I believe that. Urging them yes. to do something yes. in the right way. I really believe that, you know, he always puts someone in your path for a reason. That's it. You That's know? it. And so you just have to kind of be still and, and listen. Know that he is God. Yay. Yes. Yes, because he's he's saying something right now, but it's like when you're too busy to hear what he's saying, you know, you have to be quiet and just listen and be still. Well, I came originally seven years ago, going on eight, mm -hmm. here to showcase only gospel music, oh, which wow. we were, I was blessed because I was used to doing all of that and helping people get the attention that God wanted them to have, and I did it all free. And so with here, I had the opportunity to come in and let these people showcase their talent, and it felt so good to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So when I first started, I'm going to bring in every kid, every guy, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. I had the talent. I've been doing it since 1975. But that wasn't what God had planned. That's right. He completely turned it around. All of a sudden, I've got people wanting to be on my show, and I'm like, ooh, God, I don't know about that. <laughs> that doesn't line up with your word. I kept hearing, trust me. Right. I know what I'm doing. Exactly. Just follow the lead. Exactly. So when I get put in a situation, hey, Miss City, would you would you let me come on the show? And my, and automatically I'd already prayed up about it. Right. And that was the biggest blessings I had because the people that I didn't think I'd feel comfortable around right. actually were a blessing in disguise. And on this setting, they actually broke down and had tears that someone had given them. Wow, that's amazing. To showcase their talent, not their flaws. Unconditional love. Exactly. And so this 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 uh, ability to be able to have this station uh, program is awesome. I've met many people from Hall of Famers to to just local artists, which is my heart. Okay. I met children. I have the heart to encourage, challenge children to showcase their gifts. Guys, just keep on. I keep trying to think I'm going to leave. <laughs> I'm going to quit. But God keeps putting people like you in my path. Thank you. And this is an opportunity that is a free access. You don't have to pay anything. It's all free. God gives everything to us free. Exactly. He doesn't charge us for exactly. our services. Now, with that said, I met you at a book signing. Yes. In Thibodeau, okay. Louisiana. In Thibodeau, Louisiana. Now, we want to get back and kind of tell people what's inside this book a little bit. Not everything. Right. But just tell us what you wrote. Okay. What I did in the book, first of all, I reached out to the social media. And I asked people, I said, what would you do if you had an extra hour? <laughs> okay. And I did get some responses, but, you know, in, in a nutshell, they all pertain to something that they would do for themselves. So that told me right there, you know, I'm not the only one who put myself last on the list. Okay, so you know that was part of the book. When you know, if you read the chapters, um, the other thing was, of course, I told my story. I told my story and all the changes I needed to make for me to live my best life, and that included, um, of course, being able to be closer to God, also closer to my family, and also stepping out of my comfort zone. Because when you step yeah. out your comfort zone, you're going to find a little bit more out there that God's. Uh, got prepared for you okay so what I did was um, I talked about my son as he was one years old and all of a sudden he was a teenager and I mm -hmm. missed that you know um, I talked about um, sometimes when I felt really really depressed you know because you know you wonder why you're getting up in the morning if it's just to go to work and come home you know um, something else that's very important to me in this book I reached out to other people Amen. So they could tell their testimonies. Amen. Yes. I mean, um, I, 
I feel so happy, you know, and grateful for the people that shared their stories because it's not just about me, it's about them too. And you know, you may not share my story, but there's someone in the book that you might could relate to. People talked about uh, substance abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, people talked about addiction. You know, people talked about, uh, oh, I have this one young lady. She talked about, you know, as she grew up, she's only in her 20s, but as she grew up, you know, um, yeah. how she got into drugs and, you know, and, you know, and had an accident. And that's what turned her life around. You know, and your, your life can relate. Yeah, absolutely. Your absolutely. Um, this one testimony, um, this gentleman talked about how he was on the operating table and he was having brain surgery. Wow. And he heard his calling and he said, and God said, not right now, <laughs> not right now. You're gonna, you know, it's like you have a purpose, you know, and so he told his story. But I mean, I'm telling you, the book, it, it just brings so many blessings out there. I mean, mm -hmm. um, and also as a nurse, I had to put a little spin on it because okay. I had to talk about the medical side, you know, of being so busy. Of yes. course, yes. you can be very stressful. Yes. Stress can lead to other issues, yes. medical issues. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I also talked about um, things you can do to relieve the stress. I also talked about just on a daily basis, something you can say to just try to Put yourself in the mode of some peace, okay? So like I said, the book is not just about me. I think it can relate to a lot of people in different ways. As you're speaking, I keep thinking about what would I do with that extra hour? And the number one thing is exactly what I need to do. Continue writing all the great testimonies yes. that I have to share, yes. including other people and their testimonies. Because yes. yes. a person will believe you if you have been in their shoes. Absolutely. Or you know someone that can relate, like you said, in your, your stories in there. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to pick that book up. Exactly. And they're going to get not only just like you, that one hour. I know if you ask me that, mm -hmm. I need to continue writing my sixth book. Wow. And, but, but it's in God's timing because it is not. Yes. But right Absolutely. now, that's why I need to readjust and make a change, mm -hmm. just like you suggested, so that I can do what God wants me to do. Right. Which is write my prayer warrior, which would be the last of my uh, spiritual series. Okay. And from there on, yes, just like you, I've always volunteered for a lot of people. I've always made a living. I've worked very hard. I've always had to plan and thought, you know, I want to be the best. I didn't need any help from anybody. Right. I worked myself into a massive heart attack. Right. Wow. Over, and medication, and God brought me through all of that. Mm -hmm. And I was too humble to say, yes. Yeah. How are you today? Oh, I'm blessed. I'm doing just fine. Mm -hmm. I'm believing that God, but I don't really feel that great. Right. And so, but I'm not a downer kind of person. Right. I don't want a pity party. Right. I don't want to tell you. That I was sent home to die in two weeks, but here I am still. Oh, I'll tell you that part. Amen. But I don't get on the pity party and feel sorry for me because where I am today, no accident, right. on purpose, God exactly. has planned. Exactly. So with that extra hour, it's really having time with God and doing what God exactly. really wants you to do exactly. also, in my case. Mm -hmm. So that really impressed me, and I haven't even been able to read your book yet, <laughs> you know. And uh, But any other uh, book signings coming up? at this particular um, point. Where have you been? Okay, I have did book signings in Thibodeau, yes. like I said, where we've met. I've also done uh, book signing in um, St. Charles Parish. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar. No, I know the name though. Okay. okay. Um, there is one coming up in June 10th. It's going to be at Southern University in Baton Rouge. Oh, wow. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. And hopefully, I'm in the process right now of getting one set up um, June the 17th in Galliano. Wow. Okay. Someone else was on my show and mentioned the same thing. Yes. Well, I want to remind uh, Katie Anna that you have a website up there. And if you'd like to know where she's going to be and go out and check out, uh, see what's up. I know that your books are available on Amazon.com. Yes, absolutely, Amazon.com, and you can go to my website, www.MelindaTurnerBestLife.com. Okay, and that's up on the screen. So we'll let them find out whatever information, where you've been, where you're going. Now, we have four minutes left in the show, and I want to tell you right now that the most important thing is if you go ahead of God, 
we have problems. Yes, absolutely. But if you're led by the Spirit, but are you still working? Yes, I am working. So uh, you're working. You, I'm glad you said that. I'm yes. glad you said that. Um, even though I did cut down full time uh, being a registered nurse, okay. like I said, in a hospital setting, right now I work part time. And uh, and to be honest with you, I'm more devoted because I do community work. I'm a home health nurse. Okay. And I get to go out into the community and talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. And I, I love it. I love it. You know, I'm on my own time, you know, and if you want to tell me something that goes out the norm, mm -hmm. I'm here to listen. Well, I have you news know? for you. <laughs> I, was on, I was on aftercare okay. prior to a um, gallbladder septic poisoning. Wow. They wouldn't do surgery on me, so I wouldn't survive. That was only back in June. Okay. I had to come home with a drainage tube. Yes. Hey, I had no problem. I mean, I yes. knew God get me through it, whatever he wanted. Yes. Well, the home health care nurses mm -hmm. would come in and tell me, Miss City, you just don't act like the other people I, we have. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you've been diagnosed with COPD, didn't know you had it. You've had this massive heart attack. You got this 25% of your heart work, and here you are All able right. to fan for yourself. What is it? I said, God, that's Absolutely. all I can tell you. And it was amazing. From June to September, I was able to share as mm -hmm. they would reach out and we could right. talk about the Lord. You right. know? Exactly. In fact, I still have a few of their numbers, and they call me once in a while saying, oh, I'm know. doing. I know. I really, know. So you really want to know what's happened, I right? Know. I know. I, and I, I have gotten a relationship awesome. with my patients. It's awesome. I mean, because I would go out, and usually I'm the first one on the scene, and I will do that mission. And when you do an admission, you're very thorough, and you kind of get to know the person. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they want to go, are you coming back? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you may see me, or you may not. It just depends. If they need me to go, then I'll be there. I didn't even realize it was so wonderful having someone who really and truly wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. You knew they, they were there to take care of you. They weren't there just because of the paycheck. They really right. care. Right. And it's exactly. amazing because it was registered nurses yes. that had gone part-time yes. and was now coming wow. to, to on a home basis to different people. Yes. Well, um, we're now getting signaled as we've got about two minutes in okay. the show left already. Is there mm -hmm. anything you are led to say that you want yes. to say now? Yes, I do. I do. Um, just a few days ago, I was in a car accident. Yes, I was. Well, on the Friday. The devil's trying to stop you from coming, huh? Absolutely. And, you know, <laughs> my car was total. But, you know, God is good because I was able to walk away. Amen. You know, without a scratch. You know, but like I said, you have to look at it like that. You know, you, you know, trials and tribulations will come. Oh, yes. You know, but you have to learn that there is always a message in the mess. That's you know, right. and you have to be able to receive it and, and, you know, and say, okay, God, I know you're talking to me right now. I know this means something and receive it, you know. So, like I said, I'm grateful to him that I'm able to walk away. Well, that's a testimony and a miracle that you were even able to show up here today. Yes. Car total. You were Car able to walk away. Yes. Sounds like you were a praying mom and somebody was praying Absolutely. for you too. Absolutely. I believe in that. Yes. I pray every morning. I try to th I thank God. For what he's going to do. I already thanked him. Going to thank him again for what he's done. Yes. And I'll tell you what, with that week I had last week up until Saturday, mm -hmm. it almost made me want to just say, hang it up. No more shows. It's like, no, 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 no. no. no, no. What God puts together doesn't get thrown away. If no. he tells me exactly. to leave, I'll leave. And I'm saying that because we've been blessed with different awards in the past for having wow, the best show here. And that's all God, though. Exactly. Because I'm having fun. I'm enjoying showcasing everybody. Mm -hmm. So this show is a blessing to help others. Yes. Now I want to say something here uh, at the end of this. Through the information I read, it says, through prayer, yes. faith, and some amazing testimonies, yes. if you get this book, you will learn that you can make a change that will make it better for your life also. And I already have yes. because I have some things I need to cut down too. Um, your mission was to bring awareness to the battle of addiction through 
education. Yes. So yes. What kind of education, lady? Well, usually what I do, I will reach out to communities and I will talk about addiction. I will give them resources. You know, and my focus is more on the wellness part of it because I'm going to tell you, a lot of families don't know what to do and what direction to go in. So I like to talk to the families and, you know, and if they ask questions. I mean, and especially me being a nurse from a medical perspective, right. I can kind of inform them actually what is going on, you know, with their son or daughter or, you know, their husband, their wife. You know. Well, as you can see, the rolling credits are coming down on the screen. I want to again thank you so much for taking your time. Thank you. And I want to give a shout out to your husband. I'm grateful that he yes. was able to come along today. Yes. Even yes. though we were not able to get him to sit at the table <laughs> with us, we do thank yes. God for everything he's done. Thank God. And with that said, we're at the end of the show, but if you can continue talking about anything you want, but I want to tell you there's no action. Accident, you're here. No, no. And I at keep all. you in prayer and you keep me thank in prayer you, also. Thank you so much. Because I guarantee you when we're doing something right, yes. the devil don't like it. Don't like it's it. Okay. Don't like it. Don't get like over it. it. I know. But you know what? Every time you have a test come up, there is a testimony. Amen. So Amen, amen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Then that's the all end right. of the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. This okay. was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>